I want to go ahead and make a quick informational video on how to calibrate a new VGT actuator on an 07 and a half and up Cummins with Alpha OBD instead of taking it to the dealer. I've seen this ask uh, quite frequently on some of the pages on Facebook and some of the Cummins forums and people will tell you that you can calibrate the new actuator with Alpha OBD but they won't actually tell you how. So I'm hoping I can save somebody uh, a little bit of uh, grief and a little bit of the, the headache and stuff I had to go through when they do this process. I'm sorry if this is clunky. I'm not a professional. This is like the first tor tor tutorial I've ever done. So just uh, bear with me here and, and let's get through this. Uh, this is not an in-depth look into how to use Alpha OBD. Let's assume that you already have it downloaded. You know how it looks, uh, how it functions, and you made changes to your truck before. There are other people that made videos about how to use it that they can explain it much better than I can. So uh, please don't message me asking how to do it, uh, stuff like that. Just just look it up for yourself. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So let's assume that you already have Alpha OBD, you know how to use it, you've used it before, etc., and you're just wanting to figure out how to make this actuator work. Uh, before you get too far into it, I would really encourage you to do some research on the trouble codes that you actually have on your particular truck. And, and figure out what the problem is for sure. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna make sure that you're not just slapping a uh, new actuator on a turbo that has a hard mechanical failure, or else you're gonna burn up the new actuator just like your previous one did, and you'll be back in the same boat. There's a, there's a good reason that most guys will tell you just buy a whole new turbo actuator combo whenever you get into this position. Um, and it's pretty sound advice because generally, Generally, the electronics on the actuator don't just burn up. Generally, there's a mechanical failure or your, your turbo will get gummed up with carbon. Uh, in my case, I had an engine failure and I had a piece of metal go through the turbine and it, it damaged one of the VGT vanes. So now if you look, that mark right there is 100%. My mine will only open to about 60 before that broken VGT vane uh, contacts the turbine housing. So I was able to catch that in time uh, before it burned up my actuator. I, I caught it within, you know, probably 10 minutes of, of runtime uh, on the new build once I started to back up. And I was able to purchase a turbo uh, actuator combo off Marketplace that had a bad actuator. So I took my old actuator, which was good, and I put it on this new turbo that's on the truck right now, which is also good. And um, I'm now wanting to recalibrate that to work. All right, let's jump down here to the frame rail. Uh, we've got the new turbo, and in my case, old actuator, uh, whatever combo of that that you have. You want to plug in your actuator to the factory wiring harness. You do not want to mount the actuator to the turbo yet. It's, it's very, very specific that you do not do that at this point or it could damage the actuator. So you want to do that. Um, I would recommend cleaning out this all really good, making sure that your, your gasket surface is, is good there because uh, you don't want this, this coolant leaking down into this passage or else it'll burn up the actuator. And you also want to apply some high temp uh, lithium grease to this gear. Uh, that's what it came with from the factory, so I'm assuming that's, that's what it needs. You want to make sure that your lever arm right here on your turbo is in the far left position. This is gonna be all the way open, so that would be 0% duty cycle if you were looking at your programmer. And you should be ready to fire up Alpha OBD. So I'm gonna do a hard cut here and we're gonna pan over to the laptop. I know most of you all are probably gonna use Android. It seems like that's more popular with the Alpha OBD users than a Windows client. Uh, mine's gonna be set up a little bit differently than yours if, if you're using Android, but the menus names and, and the navigation should be the same. So just, just pay attention to what the names are and you'll be able to get through it just fine on your own. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna select the correct year. In this case, mine's a 13, so we're gonna do 13 through 17. We want to connect to the module. And if you look right there, I'm, I'm on the engine module. And I'm gonna go over here to Active Diagnostics. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit different if you're on an Android, but it should be the same concept. What we're looking for is turbo actuator preline and self calibrate. So we're gonna select that. It's going to tell you that you need to drain the coolant. We drained all of it. The actuator's off the turbo and on the frame rail. We made sure we did that. And again, it's just gonna warn you, you will damage your actuator if you don't remove it from the turbo. It's gonna cycle it uh, from all the way open, all the way shut. 
And if you still have it on the turbo, obviously that could burn some stuff up. So we've done all that. We're gonna go ahead and click start. It is going to warn you another time to remove it from the turbo. That's, that's why I told you that it was absolutely critical to, to do that. But we did that, so we're gonna click OK. All right, I know you all probably couldn't hear that, but the actuator just buzzed. It rotated a little bit, uh, went from all the way open, all the way shut, and uh, now it's wanting us to move to the next step. So for this next step, you need to install the actuator on the turbo. So just remember, you want that turbo in the far left position, uh, all the way, it's gonna be all the way open, and you don't want to touch your actuator uh, from, from when you just did the self-calibrate feature. So I'm gonna do another cut. Now I'm gonna mount the turbo and the actuator together and we will resume back All right. there. Got the actuator mounted to the turbo. Everything's still plugged up. We made sure we didn't move the turbo from its current position and we made sure the gear on the actuator didn't move at all. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click OK on this next menu that we just saw and I'm going to hold you close to the turbo itself and I'm that way, hopefully, you can you can hear the VGT cycle. So we'll click OK. All right. It has gone through its thing. I'm going to bring you into the garage here so you can see with the glare. But if you look, it says procedure complete. And that's, that's pretty much it. Now we're just gonna click stop and disconnect from the truck. If it says procedure complete in my experience, it means that it was a success. The times that I've tried this with a broken turbo, with a broken actuator, it will pop up and say installation required instead of procedure complete. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do another cut and finish reassembling this. Uh, this is the first startup. So if everything goes good, I will start another video of, of it functioning and post this up. It is the next morning. We've got everything back installed. Uh, look here on the edge monitor, BGT position down there is zero. Uh, it is responding, it's going back and forth. We don't have any check engine lights or anything. So we are going to kick on fast idle real quick. Sounds a lot like it's working to me. Let's go back here and check. minute drive to work uh, didn't have any engine lights exhaust brake works and the turbo is way more responsive with the full range of VGT motion so I'm comfortable to say that that was a success I hope that uh, it'll help a couple people that have the same questions down the road and you won't have to spend as much time researching or, or doing some trial and error as I had to do I do want to reiterate though don't blindly slap an actuator on your turbo if you're having issues if you have something mechanical going on or if your turbo is coked up with soot which is super super common with these obviously uh, a new actuator isn't going to fix your issue uh, it might band-aid it for a couple thousand miles but it's going to happen again mine had the error code p226c i believe which which means that the turbo is not responding correctly it wasn't a actuator communication error it meant that something was physically wrong with the turbo. Uh, when I popped off the actuator, I saw that, that lever arm didn't have the full range of motion, and, and then I knew that something was mechanically damaged inside. So uh, I would encourage you to do the same before you splurge the money on a new actuator, because they aren't cheap even used. Uh, but if you're in a similar boat to me where you know that your turbo is good, or, or if you just remove your actuator and you need to put it back on because you fooled with the lever arm for whatever reason, this is what you need to do. So, hope this is informative and save somebody a trip to the dealer.